about visual tools and organizers, not only photographs, but other kinds of organizers that you might use in your own teaching. I'm, I'm just very curious to know what, you've, what you use, what you um, maybe have used in the past or maybe would like to use even in the future um, in your, in your lecture-based classrooms, just to get an idea. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with the expression of pictures worth a thousand words, which is actually really useful when, um, when our students um, have low English proficiency. So using visual tools is especially salient um, in a context where uh, the students struggle with English. So um, this is one of the reasons we've decided to include uh, this topic. Okay, so we've got Anita, uh, saying oh, she uses flow charts, um, echo map, um, mind map. Good, thank you, Anita. Echo map. Uh, hmm. I'm not. Uh, I'm not familiar yeah. with that one. Maybe Anita. I was just going to say I don't know that either. So yeah, hopefully Anita, if you if you want to share that with us, that'd be great to to um, clarify what that is. And there's yeah. uh, one doctor who has a her hand up. Okay. Yes, Dr. Alice or Anita. And uh, Anita, if she wants to let us know about the eco or echo map, but uh, we have a raised hand. Good evening. Go. Good evening. Hello. Uh, good evening, madam. Good evening. And we can use, uh, we use whiteboard for that. That can also be a tool, ma'am. Hmm. Use a uh, jam board for the online classes. No? That's also included in these tools, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, we use uh, small models for explaining the chemical structures. Oh, wow. mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Good. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Okay. We've nice got lots ones. of we've got lots of ideas. Flow charts, main idea map, sequence chart. Okay. So we've obviously we've got some on the, the visual here that's um, <laughs> in yeah. front of you. Um, so maybe some of you use those and some of you use different ones, the main, uh, main idea map. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Great. So I think most of you are familiar with these. Oh, yeah, Anita, do you want, do you want, do you want to yes. share, share the, uh, the echo or eco, uh, um, chart or I forget what it is. Go ahead. Eco map. Eco map. Go ahead. <laughs> but, uh, it's basically to do with, uh, it's a visual representation of, um, a person's relation with the people around him or her, primarily family and even people, generally people we interact with and the kind of relationship we have. So whether it's a strong, weak, uh, mm. and which direction, it's directional as well. So it talks about each of these things. Oh, that's a, that's a, yes, yes, I know what you mean. This is a network map. Um, it's like a, it kind of looks like a mind map, but it's more dynamic, as we say. And it's yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. We've um, yeah, I, we've come across. Uh, yeah, so um, it's it basically describes social networks. It's a, it's a social network map. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, very interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's basically six degrees of separation back in the past. And social networks are based on that principles, like social media. Yeah, very interesting. Okay, great. Okay, okay, good. thank you. So. Yeah, we don't want to, our, our time, our clock is ticking a little bit, so we should, okay. okay. So, yeah, um, so um, just just to um, highlight, I think, some of the, the great visual organizers that, that we had on day one from, from Mina and ones that uh, were with us last, last night. So, yeah, we've had, we've had diagrams on day one. Mina gave us a nice diagram of Bloom's taxonomy. Um, tables, we have had the KWL chart, we discussed that in our quiz. Um, T charts, this one is called a T chart, it's shaped like a cross. Um, very useful for talking about um, benefits and challenges of different things, maybe pros and cons if you're doing debates, even something like um, differences, for example, in chemistry, the diff difference between acids and bases, for example. So many different uses for T charts. Photographs, um, good ways of just sparking um, interest in a topic, um, getting students to think critically about a topic, maybe what's going on in a photo. Um, useful for showing people like 
Florence Nightingale, for example, that you're going to talk about. So yeah, different uses for photos. We've got flowcharts, really useful for describing processes, especially for, for science classes. Um, and just today, I think I used one, was, I was talking about gender uh, e equality or inequality and the different kinds of um, inequalities and, and what they led to. And when we developed the flowchart the, with the students. So many different possibilities for, for flowcharts. Um, mind maps. Um, and this one, <laughs> this one happens to be about content and language integrated learning. And uh, I think this was one I did with some teachers in, in Kazakhstan. But yeah, you can see and you can get a lot of different categories from mind maps. Students can build these on the boards themselves. Um, and my personal favorite, this is, this is, uh, this is one, uh, it's, it's not a drawn flow chart, but I wanted to show you this. This was developed by some teachers I was working with in, in, in Kazakhstan, chemistry teachers, and um, they made cards uh, that they wanted to give their students to see if the students could predict certain types of uh, chemical reactions. They've also developed some um, pic pictures and, and different, different things just to illustrate different lecture points that they were trying to get across. So I thought this was really nice. Um, flow charts, visual organizers don't necessarily need to be on the board or on a piece of paper, but they can be movable and this this turns them into a kinesthetic activity and goes a lot goes along with what Mina was telling us on day one so it serves two purposes actually so that, that I thought this was quite nice okay and um one more I think we had and Tom's going to tell you about the timeline in more detail okay so something that I think is really valuable um and we're, we're back to Florence Nightingale again, <laughs> and Dr. Uh, Shanti, I think, is there. Um, and yeah, so timeline um, is, is a valuable tool for something like um, summarizing um, some reading a biography that the students have read. So for example, Florence Nightingale. So, and notice what the teacher, um, what the lecture there says, what Dr. Shanti says. So she asks her students to summarize what they have learned about students. Uh, Florence Nightingale, and to make it interactive, she puts the students into groups. We'll talk about group work a little bit later, but she, she tells the group, so we're in groups, without looking at your notes or the text, make a timeline of key events in Florence Nightingale's life. Uh, and then she gives groups different tasks. So for example, she has half of the groups, let's say there are four groups in the class, she has a group one and two, um, put events um, on the timeline from 1820 to 1860. Mm. And then groups three and four, um, they go from 1860 to 1910. And then when they, when they do that, after they finish doing that, uh, they can get together with another group or break up into, into groups with people who've done the two different timeframes. And they then communicate what they have written. So, that um, it becomes a communicative, uh, dynamic, and interactive timeline rather than just kind of filling it in. So yeah, there are, there are different things we can do with these sorts of visual organizers. It's not simply just you know put them on the board and write them out. Um, sure, it, it certainly helps if the lecture just does it um, themselves. Um, but having the students involved in creating timelines and in um, in participating and sharing their ideas is really what brings um, visual organizers to life. Um, and this is something that I think is, um, you know, we, uh, we must reconsider when we use visual aids. I know all teachers do use visual aids, but they don't all use them interactively. So that's, that's um, kind of the point we're trying to make. Okay. Thanks for that, Tom. So um, yeah, so for example, I have another example here. So we've got a flow chart. This is a, this is, um, you know, a, 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 a lecture in, in kind of sciences and um, shows a, a diagram of the water cycle. So um, this is all great. looks very nice, nice picture, nice um, clear illustrations. Um, but, you know, it could be that the students, um, they might look at it, they might forget, they might um, 
they might not connect the um, the the you know the language with the the pictures very clearly. So um, how can we make this tool interactive? 